Oh, what's going on YouTubers for ladies and gentlemen? It's the natural scary thriller. And welcome everyone to All Elite Wrestling Reviewers. This is giving you AW Rampage results from October 1st, 2021. And they were still in Rochester, New York. And their commentators were Taz, Excalibur, and I think Ricky Starks, if I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty sure Ricky Starks is on commentary. But I digress. So, let's get to this. The opening match was Ryan Danielson versus Nick Jackson being occurred by Matt Jackson and Brandon Cutler. Now, the story here is that you know, Brian Danielson wants a rematch against Kenny Omega. But he could only get a rematch if it were tends to get an opportunity for the AEW World Title. But the thing is, Kenny Omega says he was not there will not be any rematch. So what Brian Danielson's um, goal is to do is to be every member of the elite, of the super elite. I believe that's what they call themselves now. But I digress. And the first victim is going to be Nick Jackson. <clears throat> and that's exactly what happened. As far as the match was, it was good. Brian Danielson, he's a magician in, in pro wrestling, which is giving you great, great matches. And he, um, he took uh, Nick Jackson to one of his best singles matches he's ever had. And it was great. After the match, you know, the, the elite came out to uh, you know, check on Nick Jackson. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, Christian Cage, Luchasaurus, Stronger Boy, all came out to on behalf of Brian Danson and beats up on the elite. Dragon Boy got Alan Colton in the Samir trap. K Mega uh, also he starts getting into the ring in, in a goofy way, you know, a comical way and like that was terrible. Um but he gets uh, into the label lot by Brian Danson. Both guys tapping out and there you go. Oh yeah, and Brian Danson won with the um the cattle mutilation um, submission that he does. Um, I don't remember if, if you ever actually won with the uh, cattle mutilation before. You know, his, the submission move that he's, that he's known to do. Don't ever recall that. Um, but I digress. But that was that. There you go. Um... Yeah, backstage, uh, um, you know, video vignette of Powerhouse Hobbs. I think it was a, a, a promo they were cutting. I can't remember if they did or not, but basically it has, it was Powerhouse Hobbs, Hook, and Ricky Starks having a message for Brian Cage. So that, that whole thing's not over yet, so. And it's a reason why too, because, um, I think Brian Cage, um, I heard about someone having about Brian Cage. It wasn't because of the whole thing with Melissa Santos. Now, now, now that I heard about it, uh, he had some health issue that he was going through, and now he's he's doing well. I don't know if he had COVID nineteen. They didn't really explain or mention. Well, obviously with AEW television, they they, 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 they don't explain that. But um, but it tends to all uh, behind the scenes. You tends to um, you know, any dark dirt sheets, whatever. I heard I didn't hear anything of it. Um, what, what was the, um, the health issue that he was going through? But um, he's all right though, and he's coming back, and you and. So yeah, at least we could say uh, it was it's a relief that uh, Melissa Santos ain't the reason that he was taken off TV, and you know because of the comments that she made were him being underutilized. Even though the one who's really underutilized in AEW is Lance Archer. Just saying. But yeah, but that's 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 gonna be the spin up here. Um. Basically, it was on um, Powerhouse Hops and Hook said something about Ricky Starks having a message for Brian Cage. And then that's when they cut to Ricky Starks. Now, now I remember now. They, they cut to Ricky, Ricky Starks with this amazing um, production um, video promo to Brian Cage. And I thought it was good. Pretty good. Oh, and it was well done. So, yeah, again, that's not uh, over yet between um, Brian, Brian Cage and Ricky Starks or their feud. You know, it's it feels like it's been going on for a long time. So. Hopefully it comes. Hopefully, finally comes to an end. We get a segment with a viewer segment promo of CM Punk. He calls himself a a five tool player, and that 
uh, since arriving in AW, he's been untouchable. He said that he wants the best AW that AW can give him, and says that you know, in closing, by saying that he would rather a uh, choke out facing the biggest guys than um you know, uh, subsidize himself or on a uh, mil uh, middle uh, carries. I think that's uh, he's trying to say in a way. Uh, but yeah, anyway, it was a good problem. A real problem there. That same point did there. So, um. So there you go, number, number to say by. <laughs> Jay Cargill versus Nala Rose versus Thunder Rosa in a three-way no disqualification match. And I thought it was good. Oh, you got steel chairs involved. You got a, 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 a tra I think you had a trash can involved, I think, or a candlestick. I'm pretty sure you had a candlestick involved. Also, you have a table, which you know, is one of Nala Rose's uh, favorite things uh, that she does. Um, but, but Thunder Rosa was kicking ass this match, by the way. Uh, uh, yeah, and it ends up being a three-way. Um, and, and it, it ended up being a, a handicap match, which I thought it was going to be, uh, for a little bit until it ends up being a a, a turn, uh, one another. No, it was actually um, you know, all three women is going to each other, uh, you know, you know, in, in that type of uh, type of rules that should be, and it was and that was that I was uh, built very well. In the end, so basically, uh, Nyla Rose got popped onto a table out on the outside by not uh by Thunder Rose, I should say, and then uh, also Jay Cargo gets takes advantage and. Well, you know, Wales to steal chair onto Thunder Rosa a couple of times to she pinned her and beat her. And there you go. Because with the strength, the height, uh, and, uh, and, and on top of this, the steel object in the hand of Jay Cargill, after Thunder Rosa, um, you know, missing her strength to power bomb Thunder Rosa off the, the, you know, of from the, from the apron that she was standing off, off from, from that rose where she was standing on the top rope to the table. <laughs> That was enough for um, Jay Cargo to um, take advantage of it and get the win. And yeah, there you go. At least Nyla Rose didn't win. Not none against Nyla Rose. I like Nyla Rose, but at least she didn't win. Same time though, I wish you would have taken the pinfall. But that's just me. A video segment promo of Malachi Black. He says that uh, he enjoyed the torture that he put on the Nightmare Family through. He then said, you know, to close by, you know, you know, in closing, saying that his reign of terror in AW is far from over. And then he says he wants someone from AW to come um, to his door, to knock on his door, and pick a fight with me. Fight me. Fight me. Nah, he didn't say that. <laughs> I love that, by the way. I love doing that. Um, there you go. Uh, he's... What it pertains to who's going to be his next challenge, we'll get to that. When we get to Dynamite, you know, for that uh, for that review. Um, Mark Henry with a a triple um split screen, which pertains to Orange Cassidy and Jack Evans, with Ma Jack Evans being acquitted by Matt Hardy there because of the hair versus hair match. That's a main event of Rampage. I wish I could remember Brian Danson and Nick Jackson in the main event, but. They apparently put this match in the main event instead. And we care about this because someone's hair is on the line. Who cares? But this whole thing happened when Mark Henry speaking to on the both parties. Jack Evans, you know, I think it's uh I think my heart spoke on behalf of him. And then Orange Cassidy gets to talk. Because Mark Henry, you let him know, you know, uh how you are you excited about this match? And then basically Orange Cassidy looked confused and all that and says about what match? And then he, Mark Henry says, well, you're in a hair for this hair match. You know, if you lose, you lose your hair. And then Mark Henry says, oh, then I guess I better not lose then. If Orange Cassidy didn't care about this match, why the fuck should we care about this match? But the match was still good for what it was, but should that be in the main event? No. Hardy from office came out to try to uh, stop the situation, I guess. Um, basically, Orange Cassidy won the match. Um, that's when the Hard Family Office came out to um, basically stop the whole thing. But then we got, but then you know, returns to um, best friends coming out. You know, not on uh, Trent by the way. He's still he's still recovering. Um, you know, basically just standing under Chuck Taylor, uh, Wheeler, Yuda, and they had the Dark Order coming out there. And basically, the Hard Family Office like, you know, Jack Evans, we're sorry, but you know, we're leaving you. And that was it. <laughs> 
basically the butcher, the blade was out there, um, the bunny, uh, and Henigo, uh, Pirate Pirate was out there too, and all, and, and I can't remember the other guy's name, the, you know, the Indian wrestler that was, that's buffed up and muscular. <laughs> oh wait, wasn't he in the match too, by the way, from Dynamite? I could swear he was. Now that I think about it, I think he was. I just forgot to, um, that his, I forgot that he, um, he was in, uh, even part of that. In fact, let me see. Butcher, Blade, Hanako, uh, Jack Evans, Isaiah Cassidy, Mark Quinn, Matt Hardy. Dude. But what was the other guy's name? I forgot the other guy's name, though. That's eight. And then we'll change the other teams. Dark Order. You know, we'll change the Alex. John. 10, 5, Uno, Grayson, Cassidy, Coco Banda. Yeah, as my friend. <laughs> yeah, he was. Wow. <laughs> I must have missed I must have I missed him. Because uh, he he was he was the one who took the pinfall by the way. Uh, in that in that match of the um you know from from Dynamite. So so I forgot to mention that part folks. I apologize. Um that I didn't get to miss missing that part. Because I remember seeing him on the show here too, where he to um, try to help Jack Evans after losing that match, you know. So basically, uh, Jack Evans was, um, he got his hair, he got his head, he got his head cut, you know, his hair cut, he got his head shaved. Not all, not all the way, but I feel bad for him though. Because, you know, yeah, I did feel bad for him, but at the same time, whatever. And that was, and that was it. And I don't think I mentioned something too, by the way, folks. I think I forgot to mention this too. Oh my god. I think about it. I think I did. Actually, um, actually, I did forget about it, but they had to, um, they had to, um, you know, re edit it. You know, to put that part in. So. But talking about wrestling for this show, three matches, and my overall strength for the show, I went with, uh,. I think I went with a 7 out of 10. I don't remember if I did on the live reactions of, you know, Tins to the Asylum. But, this is my channel though. But, the show was, to me was underwhelming. Uh, it wasn't anything special other than the main event. But, and, and, and the, and the, and the, um, the three-way, uh, the, you know, the Q match. But the main event wasn't really nothing special. Especially when Orange Cassidy didn't even care about the match. Because, because he was confused about the match too. <laughs> So, like when Orange Cassidy's on character with the whole thing, whatever, this was a whatever show. So, I'm gonna go with a six and a half out of ten. In fact, I'll go with a, a six point nine out of ten. That was that should be fair. But there you go, folks. Wrapping say thank you for watching. For it's the natural. <laughs>